I'm Graham Sinclair, welcome to a continuation of our adventures around Queensland's Whitsunday Islands and Great Barrier Reef. Fishing along the Queensland coast is the stuff legends are made of, and in an earlier episode we joined the crew of the Ken's charter vessel Orca for some great black marlin action. Diving with Queensland Groper and the aquarium-like array of reef fish is another Great Barrier Reef specialty. From the superb accommodation on Hamilton Island to the scenic beauty of the 74 gems called the Whitsunday Islands, this is one heck of a place to stay. On Hamilton Island, small electric carts are the main mode of transportation. They provide a convenient link between the resort and the village. The village contains the restaurants and facilities that help to make a Hamilton Island holiday truly unique. Our time in the village was short as we had some unfinished business out on the reef. Gordon Hallam and I were going handlining. I think we'll go and do a bit of bottom fishing. See the edge of the reef over there, we'll just move out into the shoaly country where the main part of the reef drops off into deep water. Find a couple of deep bombies in about probably 25, 30 metres. Drop the anchor and we'll see if we can hand line up a couple of nice coral trout. So, so coral trout, the major species that you'd be targeting? Yeah, in this coral trout, uh, sweet lip, uh, Maori, oh. Maori wrasse, uh, quite a few different species of tide are good to eat, uh, but the sweet lip and the coral trout would be the best, and you never know, we might get lucky and get a red emperor. Okay, good. Let's try that. Sure, it's all different for me, all new. I'd be a very happy lad just to get a bend in my rod. <laughs> a bend in your rod? Yes. We were about to anchor on the edge of a channel that flowed between two reef systems. Colour sounders are a very valuable asset in this sort of country, and the results were about to speak for themselves. Better go, Neil. Just take a piece of squid, start at the end there like that. Thread him on about three times, covering all the shank of the hook. Do these coral trout have a preference for bait? Any particular type? This bait we're using is very good. Squid, and then I usually put a, a small piece of gar or a pilchard on the end, make it uh, what we call a cocktail. That's a good trout bait. You always leave the tip of your hook showing. Don't yeah. bury it in the bait, because when the fish grabs it, we want that hook to go straight into him and not be buried in the bait. We sure do, and you've just got hook, and then floating and then ball sinker behind. Sinker right on the on the hook. Fine. We're fishing on a corally bottom, and you often get snagged. So with the sinker there, if you do get snagged, you can jig it, and the sinker will often bounce the hook off the coral. Therefore, we don't lose our gear. Okay. Anyway, we'll put this one in the water and see what we can haul up with it. Go for it. Yep, it smells like squid. Isn't it? This tide's still got a bit of run in it yet. Yeah. It hasn't uh, hasn't turned yet. So you're letting it right to the bottom? Right to the bottom where they live. And bring it back up a bit? No, no, just let it sort of sit on the bottom. You can lift it away from the bottom. Oh, there was a bite and I missed him. Why did you He's miss there. him? Why did you miss I'm him? Because I'm not a good fisherman. Oh, okay. <laughs> So let him down to the bottom. Yeah, down to the bottom. God, it's ages since I've used a hand line. Is this a pen hand line? That's a Cuban fin oil, that one. <laughs> Thank you. 
How'd you go there, Grimey? Got him on? No. Once you get him on, keep him looking at you. We're just about flicking arm clean out of the socket. Thanks, mate. Just strike and keep heaving. Yeah, just keep pulling. If you get a big trout on, he'll want to go home to the coral, so you've got to stop him from getting into the coral. Come on, eat it. Go, 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 go on, Gordon. Got this one, he's not very big. So that's the trick. That's the trick. Let him eat the bait and then hit him hard. And then just keep him looking at you like that. Right. This is not a big fish, he'll be a, a throwback. Oh, it looks yeah. like a red throat. No, it's not, it's a little cod. Little wire netting cod. Pretty little fish. He is a pretty fish. We just grab him there. They don't have any nasty teeth. Well, grab those... by the thumb like the thumb there like that and just take the hook out. That looks like nasty teeth is a relative term. And that's called a wire netting cod, as you can see the chicken wire effect on his skin there. Beautiful. Pretty fish. Pretty fish going home? Yes, going home. Right. That's what you put in money. Thank you. One thing's for sure, Aussies are not afraid to put plenty of bait on their hooks. A combination of firm and soft baits is a very productive cocktail. Just put that little thing there. Into one again? Yep. Oh, I missed that one. I dropped him. Had him on. Dropped him. Good chance for the Kiwi to catch up. <laughs> Yes, that's a better, oh, that's a better fish. fish. Good boy. Better fish. Seems a bit like a sweet one. lip. Just put that this is a red throat sweet lip, this one. This is a beautiful fish. Oh, what a beauty. Is that one of your target species? Yeah, it sure is. That oh, is a beautiful eating fish. What a eating beautiful fish. fish. Now, while we call him the red throat, if you look in there and see how red he is in the mouth. Beautiful Absolutely fish. gorgeous. That's an Australian habit too, isn't it? It is. Yeah. We all do that. Expiring year. Good. Thank you. Just when this. Ooh. Just whack one of these on your fingers, Graham. Leave the tip. Each, each index finger like that. Just stops you from losing any fingers that you might want. Okay. So how far down? Oh, just over. Mainly get the cuts in, in the uh, joins there. Okay, great. That's a good idea. It is, yeah. You hand liners watching? Ooh, this fish here. This fish the finger protectors were cut from bicycle tyre inner tubes and a very worthwhile addition they proved to be. This is good fun. Fish here are also beautifully coloured. And they all have teeth. All the better to bite your bait. Come on. Ah, I got you this time. Keep him looking at you. This one. Looks like a gee. Ah, gotcha. Oh, another oh. red throat. Very nice. Just a little chappy. He's okay. There you go. Beautiful fish. So straight in the bottom jaw? Not with no. that one, no. They've got very uh, stubby teeth and strong jaws. What I do with him is just grab him like that. Up in the gills there. And he sits still. Just go through the eye if you're going to use a head. Just let it hang there. I'll put a real favourite at home for snapper. Yeah, good bait. Yeah, very good, good all, bait. Good all-round bait, the old oh, pilchard. Really? It is, indeed. Righto. Good business. Go down there. Yeah. Well, that was a good scale I came up with. Before. It was. That looked like a Maori rass scale. Well, having seen some of those Maori rass while we are diving, some you of them... You must have seen uh, some of the pontoon. Yeah. yeah. Well, some of them will have your water skiing. Barefoot. I'm just letting it down to where I think it should be just about on the bottom and then stopping the line from travelling. Right. And if I don't get a bite for a 
10, in 10 seconds or 20 seconds and then drop it down a bit further. Is that the That's technique? Right. Yep. Right. I think I've been cleaned out again. But I'm sure I have. There's a bite there every time you hit bottom. Yeah, absolutely. Every time a coconut. Come on. You got a good one there? Come on. Come on. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, I wasn't quick yeah. enough, was I? The shark just ate that fish. Sure did. And that's didn't. called a Maori wrasse. Oh, no. Now, the reason for Maori wrasse is, you'd know Graham being a Kiwi. See the side of his face? Mm, beautiful. Tattoos like a Maori. Mm. And the shark ate that fish so quick. He didn't even leave you the good bit. No, not even the good bit. Fantasy's Hardy Reef World is a great place to share the company of some sizeable Maori wrasse. Stand by for another great dive. Doug Patterson, my dive buddy, has a very close relationship with these members of the wrasse family. Doug's antics are an indication of how trusting some species become when man is viewed as a friend rather than a foe. Mind you, bribery in the form of a crust of bread did help to cement the relationship. Rats comprise any of 300 or more species of fishes of the family Labridae. One end of reef world is secured to the shallow section of the reef and a swim in that direction reveals all manner of reef dwelling fish species such as the barramundi cod, coral trout and hundreds of species that I was unable to identify. are often abundant around the coral reefs and most wrasse are carnivores preying on marine invertebrates. They range in size from about five centimetres to two metres or more. Most species are elongated and relatively slender. Characteristic features of wrasse include thick lips, large scales, long dorsal and anal fins and large often protruding canine teeth in front of the jaw. Wrasses are found throughout the world in tropical and temperate seas. Our dive with the Maori wrasse in 20 metre visibility and 24 degree centigrade water was a real beauty.
reasonable number of turtles frequent the area and every now and then one glides past to better scrutinise the human intruders. I would recommend the fantasy dive day trip to Hardy Reef World if you are ever fortunate enough to be in the vicinity. At the end of this series, you can win $1,000 worth of pen fishing tackle. This could be a pen balance surf set, game fishing, boat fishing or fresh water set selected by you. All you have to do is fill out the coupon in New Zealand Fishing News and send it in now. During each episode at this time, the weekly prize winner's name will appear. They will receive a pen cooler bag and New Zealand Fishing News hat. Remember, you have to be in to win and good luck. Yeah. He's been feeding on sea urchins. Sea urchins? Yeah. And as he's feeding into the ball of the, the, the body of it, all the spikes are going into his around his mouth and they okay. break off and leave purple marks. Ah. Spiny sea Got urchin. one. Come here. Oh, that's a good fish, unless a shark that's eats a it. That's a shark. Oh, shark, got shark got him. Just nailed him again. <laughs> you were lucky, Neil, getting that fish. Bastard sharks. Yeah, I was. Man. He just woofed that. Oh, pretty hard on tackle, he's hey, sick of red throat. Oh, that was silly. Good one here, good one here, good one here, good one here. Oh, it's a trout in the boat, in the boat, quick. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, trout. Yes, sir. Thank you very That's much. What a beautiful fish. fish. Beautiful fish. That's the other eating fish that we're that after. That is the good eating fish that we've been chasing for the last half an hour. And you wouldn't put your hand on that gob? No way, not with those teeth. Just in there in the gills and there he is. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful to look at and beautiful to eat. Lovely blue spots. What's the size limit on those out the here? 38 centimetres. So we'll just check this one but he will go over. Yeah. He's about 46 that one. 46. A lovely fish. Beautiful eating. How many of those are you allowed to take a day? You're allowed, the bag limit's pretty generous actually, you're allowed to have 10 per angler per day, but they must be over 35 centimetres. And he's 40... 46, okay. and savage. Well, savage beastie, you're off for the pot. Best eating fish on the barrier reef. There you go, on the horse's mouth. Good fish. Good, good fish, fish coming in. Fish, good fish, good fish. I don't know. Where are we going to get him? Here he comes. Oh, what do we got here? Gumboot? No. Oh. No. Cobia. Cobia, grab a gap there. Quick, mate, quick. Kenny, grab a gap. Quick. Oh, yeah, I hope that one. more hand on. Where is he? Right under the boat. Oh, Come bullshit. out under the boat. Get out from under there. Oh, he beard, all the props and rudders. Oh, you here bastard comes. kitty. Here he comes. Oh, oh, they're a strong fish, too. Oh, what a bastard we didn't. This guy. We'll get him. You may not have any skin left. Pull that up, mate. But you'll get him. Yeah. Pull it up on deck so it's out of the way because this fish will swim right through that. Pull him, Ken. Pull him up. Oh, oh shit. Look out. Oh, oh, there you go. That's a strong fish, this. Yeah, they are very strong. I'm going to dump him on the deck too, so. Uh, It'll be every man for himself. Grab that too, Kenny. Here he comes. Here he comes, mate. Oh, he's a nice cobia too. Bloody earth he is. Don't let him go under the boat. Quick. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes! Look out! Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Look out. Give him a few hits there, Kenny. On the head. Whoa. Don't break anything. <laughs> 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 Watch out when you're fresh with these offers. <laughs> what a good effort. Carnage. Thanks, mate. That's Gee, a good, that thing had some sting in it. That's a good fish on a hairline. 
Ooh. Bloody top fish. My word, yeah, he'd done well. And what's he called? Cobia. Or black you king, or black king fish. Have a look at him? Yeah. Uh, and what are these guys like as a table fish? Beautiful. Particularly barbecued. On a barbecue plate. Cobia. Just lying on off him. Skipper's done most of the damage on this. What oh. size do these grow to, Skipper? Oh, they grow very big. Way over 100 pound, Graham. That fish is probably around... 15 to 18 pound. Yeah, feels about Very right. good eating fish. Cobia or black kingfish. Particularly good. Sliced, not too thick, on a hot barbecue plate. Well, I'd say they'd be pretty Beautiful. mean on light gear too, on a rod, wouldn't they? They would be. Heaps of sting. Well justifying the kingfish association. Thank you for uh, administering the coup de gras on this guy. Oh, my pleasure. That's the first of that species I've ever caught. Tremendous. Thank you, sir. Well, he's gone. That's it for me. I'm not playing that game anymore. Oh. Oh. Everything we hook now is, uh, is going to the sharks. But it's been a superb day on the Great Barrier Reef with the Spanish mackerel and a uh, nice taste of bottom fishing and a dive to boot. So catch us on the next episode of Gone Fishing for more fishing action. Till then, we're going to have some more fun. Just here. Yeah. Gordon Hallam now charters the Barlick 3 bottom fishing and trolling around the Whitsundays. Barlak 3 cruises at 22 knots and is equipped with the latest gear, including Penn International rods and reels. If you're looking for an outstanding holiday destination, then Hamilton Island and the Whitsundays have something for you. And coming up on Gone Fishing, fly fishing for brown trout in North Canterbury with guide Guy Hurd.